In this video, we're going to be installing a timing belt on a 1.8T. This is an AEB engine head. It's going to be the same process for other engine codes. Before we install the belt, we need to get the engine in time. There's two timing marks, one on the timing gear right here, right at the top, and then one on your valve cover right at the crest. And you're going to line those up as perfect as you can. So look at it straight on and make sure they're lining up in a straight line. In order to get this lined up, I don't like to use this bolt here. It puts a lot of tension on it and we don't want it to break. Using one of these vice grips, we got it from Harbor Freight, and it has a chain on the end of it. You can wrap it around the gear here. It's a very good idea to use a t-shirt, some kind of cloth to cushion it. Then it'll grab on just like that. And then we're able to use this to pull it back and forth because it's a little bit tight especially whenever you first have everything assembled to move it. So tightening it on this bolt might be a little bit too much. It might snap, so this makes it a little bit easier. On the harmonic balancer, if this was bolted onto your camshaft gear, there's a timing mark right here on the top. And then on your timing belt cover, there's an arrow. So when this is assembled together with the timing belt, everything should line up whenever this is at top dead center. So it'll make more sense as we go along because there is no timing mark on this gear, and if you're looking for one, you won't find one. This is connected right to your piston, so we're going to take this to top dead center. Once cylinder one is at top dead center, and these two timing marks are lined up, then we can put the timing belt on. In order to see where the piston is at, we're going to take a long extension or a wooden rod, something that's going to touch down on the cylinder. This is a 13 16 uh, socket here, and we're going to go on to the end of the crankshaft. And what we're looking for here is top dead center. Some people will say that the top dead center of the compression stroke, right now the exhaust stroke, the compression stroke, the power stroke, they're all exactly the same because it's not even hooked up to the valves. It's gonna always go up and down to the same height every time. So we just need top dead center. And what we're looking for is when that comes up to the top and just before it starts going down, right at the top is what we're looking for went a little bit too far. You'll feel it gets real easy once it gets to top dead center and it's easy to go past that. Right there. Now we have the valves lined up on the timing mark and we have the crankshaft on cylinder number one on top dead center. The hydraulic tensioner is what's gonna give tension to the timing belt, keep it from slipping. There's one bolt here at the bottom that I'm going to remove, and that really gives us a lot more slack, and it's gonna be a lot easier to put the timing belt on. Start to install the timing belt. It loops around the idler here that connects to the tensioner, right around the crankshaft here. And you wanna pull this as tight as you can, and then around here, which I think is the oil pump. There it is. Without this bolt in right there, this is a lot harder to get in place. I mean, you really have to fight with it, stretch it, pull it, but that was extremely easy. I was able to just slide it in place. On this long stretch back here, you don't want much slack. This is, this is good, that's not much. Right here, you can see we have a lot more slack, and that's where we want it because the tensioner is gonna pull that up and take the slack out. You don't want the slack on this side. The timing belt is in place, now put in that bottom bolt on the tensioner. For now, I'll just snug these bolts a little bit and we'll torque them later. And if you can, just push the timing belt more onto the gear. If we rotate this now, everything should move very smoothly. Nothing should bind. It should just glide through everything. Now I'm expecting the valves the camshafts up here to be a little bit stiff just because everything was just recently assembled even with the assembly lube it seems to make it a little bit stiff there's a lot of tension on this bolt so i moved up to a half inch drive it's because whenever you spin this for the first time it's it, it always takes a lot more pressure because all this is freshly assembled even though we have assembly lube it needs a little bit of turning for that to work in And right away, I can really feel this loosening up a lot easier. Now we can switch to a ratchet.
I realigned our timing marks here. Next, we're going to install the timing belt cover. And then after the cover, we can install the harmonic balancer and line up those timing marks, make sure everything is correct. We'll put the timing plate on, put in the harmonic balancer. This dot right there lines up with the nib on the bottom. In order to make sure that both of these timing marks are lined up at the same time, we'll need to pull the tensioner pin and get tension on this belt. Because as you can see, whenever I spin it, there's a lot of lash back. And there's a point of slack where when this is moving, the belt is pulling slack out from one side and that side isn't moving. So I can't get an accurate reading. We'll pull the tensioner pin. Now we'll crank it around with the full tension. It's a good idea to double check. Sometimes you can't trust these timing marks. You can imagine they're stamped in if the machine messes up. That could be really bad. So you wanna make sure that this is at top dead center and when this is at top dead center, these two timing marks should be perfectly lined up. And as you can see, this is one tooth off because this is at top dead center. So we are one tooth off, which means we need to basically take off the timing belt and advance it that one tooth where it's gonna be correctly lined up. Once we get the tensioner off, we have to reset it and I'll show you how to do that. In order to retract this tensioner, we need to put it in the vise, and this is a process you're gonna do very slowly. We don't wanna blow out any of the seals in here. So we're just gonna slowly clamp the vise on, making sure everything is going together smoothly. We're lining up this hole with the second hole down there so we can drop the pin back in. Now we can drop that pin back in place. Remove it from the vise, and it's ready to go back on the car. Now we'll take it off and realign it. It's all back together now, everything is sorted out. So these two timing marks are lining up and it's at top dead center here. And I'd say, don't trust this with your life where if these two timing marks line up perfectly, then these two have to line up perfectly as well. It's more important that cylinder number one is on top dead center than the timing marks lining up. Sometimes the timing marks can be a little bit off and it's more important that this is correct. Now we can torque everything to spec. The tensioner bolts are 11 foot pounds or 132 inch pounds. Whenever you're setting your torque wrench, set the torque to the bottom of the line here where it meets the vertical line. This is a smaller torque wrench, it's quarter inch. So that's why everything is in inch pounds. I'm converting it from foot pounds to inch pounds. Just be careful not to mix up inch pounds and foot pounds. The torque specs say for the timing belt tensioner, it's 11 foot pounds or 132 inch pounds. Personally, I think that's too tight. We don't want to strip out bolts. So I'm going to go about six or seven. I'm going to use the digital one for the rest of the torques. It's easier to hear and it beeps whenever you get close. The idler tensioner pulley here is 20 foot pounds. The timing belt cover bolts are torqued to seven foot pounds. The harmonic balancer is torqued to 22 foot pounds. Now with our serpentine belt on, the cooling fan, the tensioner, and our air conditioning belt, let's go ahead and spin this and make sure everything runs as it should. Everything looks and feels good. With everything reassembled, we're gonna see how it runs. And there it is.